We in focus, are we good? Hello, hello, welcome back to another episode. When I say another, the first episode of Keenan's Classes, Classes with a K. And today we're going to be breaking down my favourite and your favourite transition from my NVIDIA video. If you haven't watched it, check out the video. A lot of you went back to watch that part specifically, as you can see on this graph. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to break it down. I'm going to stick to my schedule of posting once a week. I'm going to show you how I shot it edited it and how and what sound design I used. I'm going to keep this as short and to the point as possible because I know you guys have pretty short attention spans. Let's slap five minutes on the clock and let's get started. I want to quickly say that this isn't actually a BTS of what I shot. But I didn't shoot any behind the scenes. So right now it's just a, I guess, reenactment of what went down. Okay, so the first thing we need is a... Okay, before we begin, can we just take a look at this, please? 87.1% of you aren't subscribed to my channel, but you're still here watching my videos. If you're not subscribed, hit that big, red, juicy subscribe button down below, and let's carry on with the video. Okay, so the first thing we need is a dolly. So this is a dolly track that my friend Josh kindly gave to me. And what we're gonna do now is just put these on a tripod. You now might be wondering, Keenan, what is the special technique that you use to shoot the shot on your own? How did you shoot on your own? Well, ladies and gentlemen, the answer is a shoelace. First thing you do is make a knot in your shoelace. I kind of just put it around this bit right here. So the next thing you're probably wondering is how do you pull it while you're kind of using your hands? Well, whoever created us gave us feet for a reason. You must think I'm taking a piss, but I'm actually not. All you gotta do is get your leg and literally just move it over to the side like this. Um, oh my god. Let me just reenact the shot for you. Back to the editing table. Let's show you guys how I edited the shot. This is a nested clip, so we're gonna double click into it and you can see everything that's going on here. So let's show you the two clips that I shot on their own as if they were just like cut together. My great acting. It's not really a clean transition. It just wasn't as smooth as I hoped it to be. The goal of this transition was to kind of distract the viewer's eye from the actual transition, my, my kind of like, I guess my style is subtlety in editing a little bit. The first thing I did was to make the nano leaf panels right up here, um, kind of like flicker and get the window to flicker as well. So when you watch it, you'd be like, oh wait, what's going on here? And kind of just direct your eyes to a different part so the transition can happen when you don't really notice it. Down here, I have selected a part of clip two, which matches the framing of clip one. And then I created a mask and you can see these little triangles. These are basically the mask that I made. So if we go into the mask, you can see this is the triangle. I cut the clip up into frame by frame because I wanted a different nano leaf triangle to appear at each different time. And so because we've made a mask, it shows whatever's underneath. And yeah, as we move forward through the frames, it just shows each different nano leaf panel. And if you zoom in really closely, it's actually not the best cut at all, um, which is kind of embarrassing actually. When these things happen for a frame, you're never gonna notice it. The next thing I did was actually just add a cross dissolve filter right here onto the nested clip, which then just blended clip one into clip two. Basically, this transition is just a cross dissolve with a couple of like eye candy bits here and there. And the next thing I wanted to do was make the window flash as well. I didn't actually plan this at first. I was like, oh, this will look quite cool. We move forward through the frames and I go on this clip. You can see the mask is just this part of it right here. The next video layer on top of that, we just have another window flash. And then what I did here was add a color grade layer. It's basically just Lumetri color. I just lowered the exposure, added a bit more contrast. I just turn it off. And on again, it just makes it a little bit darker so it blends in a little better. Moving on to video layer six. I don't actually know what's going on here. <laughs> video layer six is just the window again, but this time it's holding throughout the clip. So there's no more flashes anymore. The last thing is video clip seven, which is the screen. If I move frame by frame, it wipes in. The reason I did the wipe in is because if I just had the screen appear randomly, for me, it just didn't look as clean. I think I just quite liked it when it wiped in. Got the linear wipe. We can change the value of the wipe. That is the main bulk of the transition. And right now I was like, it looks okay, but it looks kind of jumpy. You can see in the transition, there's a slight jump. And I was like, I wasn't really a fan of it. 
So the next thing that I did was added some overlays to kind of hide some of the inconsistency with my masking. If we go back into the nested sequence that that was in, we can see right here we have a color grade. Let's just turn that off for now. And then we also right here, we have what I like to call the creme de la creme, the bit that kind of just ties it all together. And what it is, is just a light leak from, I think radium, I think radium, let me show you exactly what it looks like right here. I'm just gonna delete all the attributes. It's literally just a moving lens flare. And I was like, oh, I like this. Clip two is obviously a little bit warmer. I had sunlight flowing through my room. So if I had a blue lens flare coming down, it would look slightly weird. So what I did was headed into Lumetri color and just whacked the temperature all the way up. The next thing to do was to keyframe the opacity of the lens flare. The reason I did this is because the lens flare on its own when it's at 100% looks way too much. If I show you right now, like that just, that looks a bit stupid, you know what I think? So as I said, subtlety is key. So just add slight little kind of like opacity adjustments to make it appear in and out. So as soon as it flashes, I just up the opacity to about 24%. As you can tell, it kind of fades in and you get this kind of like hazy bit right here. But as a window goes away, it fades out. And then again, when the window fades in, it gets even higher. So each time I'm kind of like building the opacity to make it a bit stronger and have a bit more effect as the video goes on. Now here's the bit where I think it's quite funny. This actually masks the cross dissolve section. As the lens flare gets a bit brighter, as you can see, we have the little cross dissolve bit. But because you're kind of noticing the flashes and everything's happening so quickly at once, and then you have this little flare bit here, you don't really notice the bit where the faces like merge. And then lastly, the kind of light leak is just kind of consistent, but I let it fade out. The reason why I like it fading out and the lens flare moving down because it gives the shot a bit more dynamic as if it's actually moving through the frame. If the lens flare just ended like right here, for example, it doesn't look as good. Okay, so with that done, let's move back into kind of like the main composition. Let's talk about the sound effects. So here we have the sound effects and everything available. This track here is just my voice. I don't think you really want to be hearing that. The first thing that happens is a kind of like TV effect. When the monitor flickers on onto my face, you can kind of hear this. The layer below that is the music track. I got these drone sounds from the Lens Distortions Catalyst Pack, which lets me have everything. So if you listen to that, it's like, ooh, creates this atmosphere, this kind of spacey dynamic. The next thing was the sounds of the gunshot. So have a listen to this. If I play it on its own. I went online, typed in Call of Duty Warzone sound effects, and this guy had made this pack of every single sound effect you can imagine. And this is the CR56. Amax sound, I sound like such a nerd, but this here is a riser. So if you listen to this, it's a riser. And then these are gunshots right here. And what I did was just cut multiple sound effects together to kind of make a assault rifle gunshot sound. And then this sound right here is the sound of kind of like blood. It is actually a headshot sound. Uh, if you listen right now. to compete in games against other players or carry out simple editing tasks is just so that's it ultimately it was just a cross dissolve uh sorry to disappoint you guys that marks the end of this video hope you guys enjoyed it don't forget to like and subscribe you 87.8 percent of you i i don't like you but i will like you when you subscribe but yeah i'll see you guys in the next video until then peace i don't know how to do it <laughs> Guys, 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 I think I've mastered it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, peace.